Well, hello, Crashing In Podcast, and today I am joined by 70s punk band, The Rizillos. This podcast was recorded early June, and it was at the gig um, they'd done at The Robin. I think they was only doing a few dates here and there, we'll get to talking about that a little bit later. Um, but it was, um, I saw that they were playing at The Robin, and I thought, why not? I'll try and reach out to them and they got back to me saying that you started love and it's really great to get guests on that I've been listening to like for years so it's kind of it was just like like a bit of like a or like I couldn't believe it kind of thing like I couldn't believe I was talking to people that I've been like like been a fan of their music since like really young so like it was great to meet Fane Hugin and I really appreciate the manager of the Brazilians sorting this podcast. Really appreciate it. So, we're going to be talking about the punk movement, their music, and more. So, hope you all like this. I'm sure all your old punks will be into this, original punks. So, yeah, see you later, and hope you enjoy it. Well, hello, Crashing In Podcast, and today I'm with Faye and Hu- Eugene, and out the band, The Rosillos. You want to say hello? Howdy doody. Hello. Yes, howdy doody doody doody. So, you're looking forward to this gig tonight at the Robin in Belson? Yeah, we always look forward to any gig. Yeah. Whatever gig you're doing, you've got to look forward to Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll be connected. Mm. So, like, is this, like, part of, like, some sort of tour, or...? That's some dates, isn't it? It's a series of dates, yeah, yeah. It's nice to be getting back to playing live again. Yeah. And, in fact, it's, you know, so we'll... Just gives you so much energy, yeah. So, we're going to be able to do that, but uh, yeah, I suppose it's quite a wee run of shows, yeah, yeah. So, like, is this the first bunch of dads doing gigs since before COVID and stuff like that? It's the first range of them, it's the first lot of them. We've done one or two little scattered things that were made chiefly shows held over before the pandemic, yeah. This is the um, this feels a bit different, like, a, like a, you know, quite a few shows in a row, but it's the project, which is yeah, yeah. So what was it like not doing gigs and that during the COVID period, and like not being together as a band and stuff like that? Well, everything was weird, wasn't it? For yeah. Everybody. It was the same for us as for everyone else. Mm. Um, it, it, and it does feel almost like it never quite got back to what it was before. It's got back to something different. Yes, yeah. yeah. It, it, I don't think it'll ever. I don't know. I suppose hopefully it will gradually turn into into what it was before, but at the moment, yeah. you, you, you still don't know where it's going. And yeah. people, are, people are different. Yeah, yeah. So have you got anything upcoming music-wise? Like, I heard like you got doing the recording a live album, like... Well, over, started over, that, yeah. Yeah. over a series of shows, yeah. uh, you can't guarantee that everything's going to come out all on one show. It's a tall order, very yeah. difficult. Uh, you know what? You know suddenly I don't know the microphone doesn't work, or you go out of tune, or you know okay. uh, I, I don't know. There, there's a million and one things that can go wrong during the live recording. So yeah. I suppose it would be a, an amalgamation of recordings. Yeah, we've got like a few recordings and choose the best one. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah we, we sometimes have we have quite a variety of sound really because like tonight this is our um, more minimal setup. There's mm. a nice bit of a horn section as well. Mm. Uh, so we've got quite different sort of sound textures going on. Nice yeah. to get a oh, little bit of that, that I record. Yeah. So. So talking about sounds or like, development of sounds, like I, I noticed you like had an album that came out in 2015 called Zero. So like, do you want to talk a bit about that album Zero and how it like your sound developed from like if the first thing you ever done to that? Yeah. Well, it's a bit odd when you record an album and then you have decades yeah. before you do another one. I mean, part of that is because the group didn't exist. Yeah. And then after that, the band got back together, and then it was finding one's feet musically. Mm. And uh, you, you, I personally, and found, you know, there's an 
you sound how you sound, you know, your voice is sound how you sound. Yeah. Do you come back with songs that fit in with what you did before or are totally different? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there's a bit of a kind of a bit of a kind of an amalgam there. The parts of an album shifts from one kind of style or sound to a slightly different style. Yeah. But people say it's still identifiably us. Yeah. And also it felt to me what can you write that is relevant? Because yeah. it, it is it is odd being in a group that were around do, and actually exploded and finished yeah. during the punk rock days. You come back and punk rock is not the happening thing. No, no, Although no. so many bands refer to punk rock and yeah. call themselves punk, it got to the point where I don't really know what it really means unless yeah. it means a, a ragged attitude. So maybe a ragged attitude to the music. But it, it was, I think, pushing yourself into writing new material opens up areas of your head yeah. that you maybe hadn't considered before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, not everybody likes to be in the studio. I love being in the studio. Yeah. So I really enjoyed making the last, you know, the last album, although there was a few bits where it was like a bit like pulling teeth here and there, but, you know, it was great. And yeah. So I think it's, I think uh, we should be, we've started to write a new album. Oh, great. So it's, again, it's taken a while, but hopefully we'll go on to that after oh, the live. Oh, nice, nice. Look forward to that. Well, I think you, you, there are some bands who just, write lots of material and it's almost sometimes it's rather like they don't really have a, a filter on it yeah and you might think yeah well okay yeah so their fourth album there were two songs there that you liked yeah uh, i think we'd rather do an album which has more a consistently higher level full of songs of stuff yeah. that, that that you want to listen to yeah that you want to play um but it it's all depends on where you are at that time in your own mind and yeah. your own personal situation Whereas compared with Faye Loves at the studio, I don't like it in the studio. I don't, yeah. I, I, I don't like the repetition of it. It's like Chinese water torture, mm. going over the, sometimes the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah, and it yeah. depends whether you're a band that just plays music that flows and, and you're just, as soon as you write it, you want to record yeah. it. But I, I think the Rosillo stuff benefits from it. So there are songs that were on the album that were not played live until yeah. we did them. And then we play them live and hey, they're different mm. to, to the album version, yeah. aren't they? Sure, yeah. but you know, I think what's interesting is, um, yeah, I think the songs that just came up in that album that we hadn't played live were really good on the album. Yeah. You, yeah. Know, cause they're, they're, you know, I think the sort of, uh, you know, perceived wisdom is that they're going to get better after playing live, but sometimes they're just better when they come out of your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, um, I'm telling you, like, would you say the Rosillo is more of a, live band than an album type band like well we, we play live and we're respected for our live performance but i think sometimes that works that that's that's kind of counteracts certain aspects it, it's almost like you're expected to be a great live out band but you're not an album band i mean i would like to be both yeah but some bands can make an album and they can't play live yeah yeah um yes. i think sometimes the balance is, is would be nicer if we could if we were able to be able to produce more recorded music. But then again, the music scene is so different now. Mm -hmm. You know, when you were selling 150,000 records a week and you couldn't even get in the top 70, yeah. you know, that, that was a different situation then yeah. to now. And people are interested in so many more things than just music. Yeah, they've, yeah. Got other, they've got other attraction features that they go for. Yeah. So, and again, it, it, there is something a little bit dispiriting personally for when you spend all that time and all that money recording an album and people come to see you and they'd rather buy a t-shirt mm. <laughs> it's just like yeah we're not next yeah. you know we're not accessorized yeah, yeah. Um, but unfortunately that just that's part of the way it is these days yeah, yeah. there's nothing wrong with the Brazil's t-shirts nothing wrong oh, with the yeah. absolutely I saw the t-shirts and looked great. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They look really great. I like the colours and that. Like they were great, and I love the font of the Rosillos. Like it's a great font. Yeah, it's a yeah. Great, it's a great yeah. Font, yeah. So, so let's talk about the name, the Rosillos. So how did that come about? It was in a Marvel comic. Is yeah. it not? Well, kind of. I mean, it, yeah. It was it was a perverted. <laughs> Actually, there was a there was a uh, a Marvel comic of the Shadow, and it might have even been the first issue of that. There was a picture of the of the shadow who was a was a sinister figure holding a smoking pistol with a big scarf. I think it was a red scarf wrapped around his face and a mm. big black broad brimmed hat. I think I heard of that. 
standing against what I think was supposed to be the overrail Chicago trains. You know, in Chicago they have the, the trains run above your head yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on this kind of metal framework. Yeah. And uh, in the distance there was this old cafe with these flashing light bulbs illustrated. Or a cafe or a club, and it was mm. called Revilos. R-E-V-I-L-L-O-S. And I thought, oh, Revilos, and then thought, oh, let's change that to a Z. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a name that has never existed in the language of humans ever before. Okay. So we had a name of something that didn't exist. Because mm. you, do, you do get lots of groups yeah. like, you know, the police, yeah, yeah, you know, know. the Rolling Stones, you know. Quite the, the, simple. Uh, and even at the time, at that time, I thought of a band, I thought, wouldn't it be good to have a band called The The? Which there wasn't a band called The The, but later on there was. Oh, yeah. There so was, you yeah. either call yourself after something literal, or you, 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 you know, there are people who combined, mm. you know, like lead zeppelin and yeah. you know iron butterfly not that we're any of those yeah. types of bands mm. where they were contrasting and but it, it does seem that band names have moved into a more kind of uh, difficult to describe era and the rosillos yeah. when people said what are the rosillos i said come and see and find out yeah. great um, it, of course it did metamorphose when the rosillos broke up mm. Into metamorphosed into the back. Rizillos. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then, it, then it became the Rizillos again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, when the Rizillos broke up, we, <laughs> it was rather acrimonious at the time, we were told by the record company we couldn't use the name the Rizillos anymore. Oh, oh, yeah. um, but we had record companies wanting to sign me and Faye up again. Mm. And um, Richard Branson said, I'd love to sign you, but I want to sign up the Rizillos. And, and I thought, well, why don't you sign up the Rosillos? Mm. And he said, great, great, because it's not the original name. Yeah. And, and, and we got our record deals for that okay. subsequently. Oh, nice, nice. So let's talk about like, when you first came about and how, what motivated you to like, form a band? Well, what motivates anyone to form a band? You want to be a rock star or a pop star yeah. or, you, or you want to make a mark. When you're younger, I think you kind of feel you need to establish your identity, yeah. And uh, you know what better thing to do is, as a young as a young person is to establish your mark as a rock band. Yeah. And I hope I'm not speaking too much here. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. It just seemed a very natural thing to do for me. Mm. Um, you know, I I think I'd always, I'd always, we went to art college and I'd always sung, so it didn't seem like. Being in a band didn't seem, I know this sounds weird, it didn't seem any different from not being in a band because yeah. I'd always done the singing and it just was like I just sort of moved into it. Yeah. Um, it just seemed very, very natural. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just like this. And, and I, I, I do often feel, I feel to this day, I feel very at home on stage. I feel yeah. like, you know, that's a sort of natural thing for me mm. to do. They don't, they don't feel, and I, you know, I don't. It just doesn't feel I'm moving into something. I'm, it feels like I'm already. I'm going into the something that I belong in. Yeah. So yeah. And from my point of view, you know, I've been at art college for um, crikey six years, mm. and I'd ended up doing printmaking, mm. and, and I was also making stained glass sculptures and stuff like that. Stained glass windows of teddy boys and guitars <laughs> and stuff like that. Not many. Not many of them would end up in a church, <laughs> uh, and. I thought, hang on, I'm here. I'm, I'm making this stained glass stuff, and I'm and I'm doing printmaking. So I'm going to make a lithograph or an etching, of which maybe I'll make twenty limited prints. Yeah. So that's only going to get into twenty people's houses if they buy those prints. Yeah. And then, of course, the independent record scene was was blossoming. Mm. And then you thought, hang on, we can make a hundred thousand independent records, mm. which are pieces of art mm. that you can buy yeah. there for not a lot of money. And not only do they end up in the houses or on the record players of a hundred thousand people or yeah. a million people or whatever, it gets played on the radio. Yeah. So it's it's it goes out everywhere. And, yeah. and, and you know, the, the persons you would least expect. To hear your record, we'll hear it, yeah. and that was a much more appealing thing to do, to do yeah. Um, yeah. wasn't it? 
So you were make you were making an unlimited edition. Yeah, oh, great. piece of music. Yeah. So uh, was that like around the time when you formed the band and stuff like that? Was that a great time to be in the band, like with the punk gear and that? It turns out it was. Yeah. But of course, that was how it was then. Yeah. So it didn't seem. Well, you knew there was something going on. You there was taste, something in the ear. You could taste something yes. going on. Yes. And we yes. could taste that we were becoming successful almost despite what we were doing. Because we were, we'd been trying to come up with music that we thought would be successful or would do something. You know, to be quite honest, nobody was bloody interested in that. Mm. And probably neither us. And then suddenly we changed our direction of what we were doing. And it was a zeitgeist. We happened to be doing something which which came in at around the same time as punk rock, quite yeah. early on. Yeah. Um, and I suppose that was good timing for us. Yeah. And then we thought, oh, that, maybe that's what we are. Yeah. We didn't say, oh, we want to be a punk rock band. No. There weren't any punk rock bands in Scotland when we started up. But we suddenly we got accepted by that. Mm. And um, we thought, well, oh, maybe this is kind of where we are. I mean, I don't think the reserves have ever been a hundred percent punk group, yeah, and I don't think a hundred. I'm not interested in these hundred percent punk groups because all they are are re rehashes of a cliche. Yeah, but and my, you know, someone said to me the other night, "So, what are your favourite punk bands?" I said, "I don't have a favourite punk band, but some of the very early ones, like the Buzzcocks or the Clash, mm. you know, they were they really did something. It's when people come in and start copying that and thinking this is the latest yeah. thing." You know, you know what I'm saying. A bit like the psychedelia scene, like psychedelia, and that, like it was like, and with the small faces, like the record label were like, oh, that's the new thing, like psychedelic music and that. And there was like that, there was just doing what to like this trend and that. Yeah. Music drives fashion sometimes, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then when it becomes fashion, it's everybody wants to pick at it. Yeah. And that, but you still meet people who still live that era that of music fun. yeah and they they live it to the full and then you meet people who were who within six yeah. months of you know jumping up and down and poe going with safety pins in their hair yeah. let's say in a couple of years they were mad they were bank managers yeah. you know they picked at it yeah. like a cherry on a cake yeah. and then dropped it and went to something else Maybe, but yeah. i think i think it was really in your blood you never lose it like what to you what was punk to you like when like at the time what was punk to you was it the attitude or was it the music or the look or it was an attitude to music yeah, it was an attitude and, uh, and it was the music and I think it was a cultural change definitely yeah. it was a cultural change it was just basically throwing some sort of bomb in the middle of things and see what happened yeah um, yeah, yeah, I think it's had a sort of dramatic change. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Would you say it was a better change to like to the music that was going on around the seventies and it stuff was a like that? Change. It just went. Everything else just seemed God, just so boring. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a, a, a yeah, it was like a sort of music was like a sort of sort of you know, by the way, I love music from, from loads of periods, including the period just before when punk happened, but. Needed something. It needed. It needed to wipe away the excesses of what was happening. Then, you know, you know, it's great to have great musicianship, but I think you can get completely over musified. You know, yeah. uh, so uh, it just yeah, music had become a bit self, a bit self indulgent. Although, as I say, I love that period and lots of periods yeah. before it. Oh yeah, it's like I was watching like loads of documentaries and about the punk movement and stuff like that, and how before like the punk movement. Top of the pops and stuff like that wasn't like it was pretty simple. It weren't really anything that. Well, there were some good bands on it. Yeah, but it was it, it didn't exactly challenge people. But you know, the yeah. song "Top of the yeah. Pops" that the Rizzo did yeah. challenged that. Yeah. Record, that, yeah. that 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 established medium, yeah. and because it said "Top of the Pops" in it, mm. they blindly wanted the band on the telly. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's a bit like it's a. Punk rock to me was like eating a certain type of food that had the same taste for years, and then one day you just came and you started to eat limes, raw lime, mm -hmm. without any other food, and you had this astringent yeah. taste in your mouth. It yeah. felt like that, didn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you might have to spit it out because it's too, it was too <laughs> sour. Or, uh, or maybe it just, 
yeah, took all taste from what I've been away, been yeah. there the way. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a bit like when people introduce chaos into an equation to change the status quo, mm. and it doesn't necessarily change to that chaos for very long. And there were bands that were resentful of that mm. chaos that happened because suddenly they felt very irrelevant. Mm. But I think we felt irrelevant for a while mm. from other bands who were, oh, you don't play very well. You know, oh, you're not a musician. It was like if you weren't a real musician, then yeah. you couldn't be in a band. And of course, suddenly, if you weren't a musician, actually, your music was more appealing to yeah. people. Yeah, you came up with ideas, but you didn't need to be... You didn't need to be a virtuoso to express yeah. yourself. And, and those ideas were often expressed in a far fresher, yeah. more energised way. And that, you know, listen to some of the punk rock music. Like, for example, X-Ray Specs, you know. It just blasts out of you. It's, it's, it's so human and raw. Yeah, raw. You know, and that's, great, yeah. That, you know, that is great. And it, I, mean, I, I, could, I would love to hear bands like that. But the not people copying it. No, and, and, no. and if I may talk about this... Um, there's so many bands these days that just copy what came from the past. And there's a lot of members of the audience will pay and buy sell-out seats to go and see copies of groups yeah. that they used to like. It's the fake Rolex in, in, in gigs, really, isn't yeah. it? And it doesn't matter if it's fake, as long as it looks like the real thing. And they can relive the days when they used to read the time on a real Rolex, yeah. maybe, I don't know. Yeah. But it's, it's, it seems a shame because it's almost like it's just disappearing down the plug hole. Yeah. Um, so I, I remember we did a gig somewhere in Manchester and we were the only real band on any of the posters. All the rest of them were tribute bands. Tribute. All of them. And, the, and, the, and the, the manager says, well, people pay to come and see tribute bands. Mm. It doesn't mean to say that that's, that's the future of music. It's not fair, and well, it's not just tribute bands. It's just like bands that sound like a tribute band. Like they just sound like the copying. I don't know, Sex Pistols and something like that. Like for me, that's what the podcast about: finding people with an original sound, like a sound they can say, say that's like their own or something like that. Because I don't like to interview people that like copy off of people and stuff like that, and. I think that's what it's about, really, when it comes to music. Well, when I can hear someone pointing a finger at us and say, yeah, but you do covers. The Rizzillos cover yeah. some songs, but they no, don't they sound are. like yeah, the originals. We've oh. got no intention of ever sounding like the record. Make it your own. Like... Take it and, and remake and remodel it, as Roxy yeah, said. Yeah. And if you can inhabit it, and sometimes you might think, well, I'd like to do a cover of that, and you think, uh, no, mm. it's not, it's not, um, it's, 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 you know, the cover should be like you can't get enough of your own clothes in the suitcase. Yeah. So they should be shoving out of all the edge and breaking the zips. Not neatly done up. Oh, yeah. this is our version of so-and-so. And doesn't it sound like the real thing? <laughs> you know, it's pointless. Yeah, it's pointless. Too. Yeah, it is. So, with the band, what would you say is your biggest accomplishment? Oh, so many. <laughs> <laughs> our, our biggest accomplishment is... Uh, Probably still being alive. Yeah, it's one of them. Still being alive. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of bands that probably with people who were in bands that probably would still like to be alive. Um, feeling that we really made a mark and yeah. cut a groove into something, and that we were identifiable as people say that we're identifiable. Yeah. Um, and I think that comes about sometimes by chance. Yeah, and, um, not. So you, you can't engineer that. Uh, I, I remember when we, we we flew to a gig in Sao Paulo to play to play some shows, and when we arrived, the the, the, the tour manager says, "Oh, we've got you on Brazilian MTV. You have to come to the studio." And we'd just done something like a fourteen hour flight to get to Brazil, and we just walked off the off the airplane, and we went in the studio, uh, the, the the film studio, and the, there were some amps there, and we just plugged in. And one thing the Rosillos don't do is they don't have loads of effects. They just play pretty raw. Yeah. Um, rather like, you know, plug and play, little combo amp, crank the amps yeah. up, boom. So we just plugged in and, and played. And afterwards, the, the, the producer says, I don't, I don't believe it. You, you sound like your records. 
And he said, so many bands, they, they come and play and they don't sound like yeah. their records. They don't say anything like it. Mm. But if you just have an identifiable sound, mm. then let, let, it, let it happen. I mean, yeah. I think the Rolling Stones are like that. You yeah. just know it's the Rolling Stones. Oh, right? no, yeah. And there are, there are so many bands, you, oh, you know that, so and so. But bands where I've seen, well, who is that? Who's playing that? Who's singing that? Mm. It's almost like sometimes they don't have a personality. Yeah. So I suppose if we've carved a personality, I would be proud about that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a sort of odd, it's a question, I can't believe it. I haven't actually considered that before, but uh, yeah, I think for me is, yeah, in keeping with what you're saying, is that, is that we have a very individual identity. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we've, we've not tried to do that or anything like that. It's just when we got together originally, it was a mixture of personalities and, mm -hmm. and creative drive from all of us that was a certain thing. And that's continued. Mm. I mean, um, you know, there's a particular sound that we have that's just come from us, and then we've um, kept that more or yeah. less going, expanded in certain areas. But there still is our characteristic centered individuality, and um, yeah, we have our own thing. Yes, yeah, so. that's great. Great. Um, so I just want to say thank you so much for doing this interview. Like, I'm, I'm really grateful for you guys for doing this interview. Um, it's amazing actually, like because like the Rosillos were like one of the first bands I got into like when it comes to the punk stuff as well. Like so I'm really grateful that you came on and done the interview, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also um, a question I always like to ask at the end, um, have you got anything inspiring to say to the listeners before you go? Well, I don't know if they'd be inspired by it, but my advice would be if you know if if you're talking about people who are like thinking want to be in a band, yeah, please, please, please be yourself. Yeah, please don't try to be someone else. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with living through how it feels to sing like someone else mm. or play like someone else, and but but to just just try and don't just slavishly copy anything. And if you really want a future, unless to try not to play in a in a tribute band. I would say that the one of the secrets is be iconic. Yeah. Be be yourself, and if you really have got something, it will come through. Mm. And allow the icon to be created. Don't overcomplicate it. Yeah. And you don't need to be a virtuoso to write a great song. Mm. You just have to have belief in yourself and think in a in perhaps in a, in a rather obtuse way about life. That would be my advice. Yeah. Have you got anything to say? Yeah, yeah. I would say, uh, you know, although there have been some more, some positive changes over the last year few years, there's still not um, as many women in in uh, music as I think there ought to be. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't think it's uh, females fault that that's not happened. I think it's still perceived largely as a boys club. Yeah. And um, but I would just encourage women to come forward and do mm. their thing and express themselves. Yeah. 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 And I can find that voice. Oh, great. I interviewed some great female bands. I think great. they're just coming out. And yeah. also, like, some of the female bands I've been interviewing are absolutely brilliant. Like, they got quite a different sound to some of the um, or boy bands and stuff like that. So, mm. like, I do like that girl power to, like, a band. Like, I like, a girl, especially girls with a punky attitude as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's yeah. such a great vibe to, like, the scene and that. Mm -hmm. So, thank you very much for doing the interview and hope you all have a great gig tonight and good couple of gigs at the festivals and stuff like that you're doing in the future. Thank you very much. Take it. Yeah, oh. put, it, put it on our Facebook thing and, oh, you know, we'll, uh, people might like to read it or yeah, something yeah. like that. You know? um, I'll send it to, um, it's going to be send audio. Yeah, on the, it, uh, she messaged me on the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. and so put, put a link to it or something. Yeah, like yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I'm sure she'll get, get it sorted. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take right. care. Well, that was the Brazillos, Faye and Eugene. Really appreciate them coming on. And if the manager's listening, thank you for sorting that podcast out. Really appreciate it. So, got some podcasts upcoming after this one we are going to be joined by Hoopla Blue and Spitz Milk on the next episode on the Kaleidoscope um, 
episode, I guess, if you want to call it that. So, like, stay tuned for that podcast. That will be out soon, as soon as I possibly can get it out and edit it and all that. So, if you enjoyed today's podcast, please leave a like, subscribe, and take care.